Thomas Burton Center was born in 1972, and it was during the Vietnam War, and a group of very principled people, mostly clergy, decided that they would start this center where we would talk about social justice and protest the war. The Vietnam War found Molly Rush, or one of our founders, hammering on the nose cone of a missile with, uh, with the Plowshares 8. Uh, and she ended up in federal prison for a while. There's now a book that's written about her called Hammer of Justice that we recommend to everyone. And uh, that was quite an auspicious beginning. Climate change has made a big impact uh, on social justice. We now have to practice more compassion than we ever have had to in the past. When we talk about mitigation and uh, fossil fuels and keeping 80% in the ground and divestment and everything that we can do to keep that 80% in the ground, we also have to talk about adaptation, something we really hate to talk about because it sounds like, oh, you're just going to get used to it. But that's where social justice it will really come into play and human rights. An environment is not a backdrop. You know, our, our oceans, are, there's acidification of our oceans and uh, our rivers are being uh, polluted. We only have 1% of the world's water is potable. And uh, so we started to emphasize what this meant, what this meant when people were making decisions for their communities and for whole nations without taking the earth and everything on it into a consideration. The younger generation that's coming up today really sees the connections between a lot of the major forces at play and a lot of the major struggles for justice that we see. Uh, we see that the face of environmental justice, the reason that there is quite often so much environmental degradation is because of the lack of economic justice that we have and the fact that it's multinational corporations who are usually conducting the bulk of the world's environmental damage. We see that the forces of war are just another face of that same thing and we see that, you know, quite often the result of this is the lack of basic human rights. Uh, to things such as water. And so I think in that way, I think that there's a lot more of a natural connection for folks. And I think that, frankly, current events such as the tragedy that's happened to the water supply in Flint, uh, the um, assassination of Barda Caceres in uh, Honduras, um, those type of things are just show how interconnected different issues are and how it isn't how we can't just continue to operate in silos around this issue or that issue as activists, but we really have to come together um, as a larger community and uh, with the larger community to really push back against a lot of these unjust acts that are occurring. I think that the conversation between sustainability and social justice in the future will be between young people coming together and saying, what kind of a world do I want to live in? Merton Center has always been made up of ordinary people with uh, great ideas, you know, that all point to a future that isn't, um, that isn't the one we have today. We are all change makers. We talk about a global commons where everybody is living and being sustained together, and it's when we talk about the sky, we talk about the earth, we talk about uh, the future, we're talking in a totally different way, that these are the things we have in common and that we can really care about each other and uh, everybody else in the world. I know that everybody loves the place that they live in. Everybody loves their home.